This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another one of our speaker series. Today is the 12th of June, and we are here with Rebecca Forbes, who oversees uh, programmatic engagement in community building for the Travis Mannion Foundation in their Northeast region, and has been with TMF for almost three years. She loves being able to work among the military community, and especially enjoy seeing this work continue to grow and reach more and more young adults across it, the region. I'm so excited to uh, have had guest speakers from the TMF come here before, and I can't wait for her to explain it to the people who are in our audience today. And uh, in case you want a fun fact about Rebecca, she's based out of New York City and longs for more access to trees. So if we can get her over here in person, that'd be fantastic. But Rebecca, thanks so much for coming in. This is great. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thanks. So can you uh, tell us a little about yourself and, uh, and, and TMF, more importantly? Yeah, yeah of course. Um, so as Chuck mentioned, um, I am a program manager with the Travis Manion Foundation. I've been here for about three years. Um, I am based here in New York City. I'm originally from uh, Connecticut. And I came to uh, the Travis Manion Foundation really because I wanted to continue serving our uh, military veterans community, but also um, because I really wanted to create opportunities for our veterans to work with our young adults. So as um, you know, you all have been able to do, we've had some of our speakers um, speak with your council in the past, I guess, year or so um, now. And I just think that's a really um, important opportunity for our, for our veterans and our young adults to connect with each other and learn about each other's perspectives and experiences. And I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but um, that's really why I came to the, the foundation. Um, I myself am a civilian, um, so I did not serve in the military, but um, have been working in this community for um, just about six years now. Um, and it's always teaching me something new and it's just a really wonderful group to be a part of. Um, and if you want, I can talk a little bit about the foundation and That'd be wonderful. Yeah, maybe a little bit of the history. Uh, so the people who some actually I, I recognize a couple of names who were here uh, the last time, but uh, for the rest of us, you know, a little bit about the foundation and what you do. Sure. Um, so the Travis Manion Foundation is what we call a, a national veteran service organization. So what that means is we're really focused on bringing communities together, both to support our military community, but also to what we always say is empower our uh, military and veterans communities. So um, what that means is really engaging our veterans in uh, community service and different programs. Um, so our focus is really on uh, bringing communities together um, to talk about character, service, and leadership. And we do that through a number of different programs. We have uh, youth mentorship programs, and we also have um, some uh, ways for folks to come together and do community service or uh, run a 5k so we kind of get our hands in all different kinds of pockets, but um, You know as an organization we are really committed to um, Continuing uh, the legacy of our, our military service members. So um, As you may imagine we are named for uh, Travis Mannion um, and he was um, Actually from Pennsylvania. He had served in the Marine Corps um, he was killed in action on his second deployment in Iraq in 2007. Um, and after he, he died, his family created the foundation really to honor his legacy and his commitment to service. And so, you know, as I mentioned, everything that we really do is um, to honor the legacy of our, our military and our, um, our fallen heroes especially, and, um, you know, really to further something that Travis had always kind of lived by. And that was this idea of if not me, then who? And he was really called to um, service not only as a uh, member of the military, right, not only in, in the Marine Corps, but also as a, um, an active, you know, leader in his community here at home. Uh, so we are actually a national organization. So while I'm in New York and while we're headquartered in Pennsylvania, we have folks in San Diego and Chicago and Atlanta and uh, Boston and really all over the country. So, yeah. How many people do you have, uh, or are they, or how many little miniature foundations do you have all around? Uh, how, what's your staff like, or maybe your volunteer group? Sure, um, so we have about 50 people on staff, um, and they're again, all spread out, um, all working from home right now, as you may imagine. <laughs> um, uh, so we have about 50 people on staff, and then in terms of our volunteers, in terms of our community, we have over 125,000 people who are involved or have been involved in the foundation um, in the last, uh, 13 years. 
Wow, geez. Um, so as scouts too, I was just thinking because uh, so many words were were popping up like character and uh, fitness. And uh, and we do character and fitness and citizenship and um, leadership. Uh, more importantly, um, what kind of programs uh, do you discuss that kind of drive the character and the leadership opportunities? Yeah. So for our young adults, um, something that we've been able to do with with your council and with um, scouts across the country is our character does matter program. So. Uh, Character Does Matter creates opportunities for um, primarily veteran, uh, what we call mentors, to talk to kids about character and leadership. And so they're talking about their own experiences having served in the military, but more broadly um, sharing stories of people that really inspire them, who are positive role models, and who, you know, our kids can, um, you know, look to as, as good examples of, you know, character strengths like leadership and perseverance and, and gratitude. Um, uh, curiosity, right? Integrity, teamwork. Um, all of these are strengths that our mentors um, really love to speak about. And, and again, they're really sharing um, stories and uh, creating spaces for, for our kids to talk about um, their own experiences in developing their own character and being a leader in their community. How do you find uh, volunteers to, to to come up and like, you know, actually share their story. Cause I could imagine, you know, serving in the military, everybody's got some stories that could be great, that could be bad. How, how do people find you or how do they get involved? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So um, we do it in really all kinds of ways. So uh, we do a lot of um, kind of on the ground uh, outreach, right? So we'll, um, I guess I would say kind of in normal, quote unquote, normal times. Um, we used to do a lot of uh, tabling events, right? We would go to events and kind of talk about what we do and talk about our work. Um, we would do networking events. Um, we also talk a lot with college campuses and, and different partners in that way. Um, we collaborate a lot with other organizations that uh, support veterans and work with veterans. Um, and then I actually would say, you know, um, we actually have a lot of word of mouth and um, personal connections. So there are actually a fair amount of people that are in involved with the foundation who knew Travis, who served with them, who went to school with them. Um, and so they are continuing his legacy and, and really honoring him by being involved with the organization. When you're doing your community events, how do you identify the opportunities uh, to create events in particular communities? Is, is there, I don't want to say like, is there a list or, or do, through that word of mouth maybe? Um, yeah, I think it's really, all of the things, right? We want to be able to, to plug into as many communities as possible. So I will fully admit when I started at the foundation, um, I was actually the first uh, staff member here in New York City. And my role is to build out our community both here in New York and um, into New England. So right in your neck of the woods. Um, so I was very much uh, wanting to plug into any any opportunity that we could just to be able to do things. Um, and I think, you know, there's one side where it's just, you know, saying yes and, and trying to do the best we can and, um, you know, working with new partners. And I think the other side is having, um, you know, certain goals, wanting to be in different communities and so, um, or certain states. And so one example um, that I'll admit is very close to my heart was Connecticut. Um, so I grew up in Connecticut. Um, you know, it's the home of the Coast Guard, but it wasn't a particularly, you know, military um, focused place, I would say, to grow up. Um, and so I was really committed once I started here to trying to figure out a way to do something um, kind of in my own backyard. Um, so we do a service project, or again, normal times, but hopefully once again, yeah. um, we do a service project uh, in Connecticut um, doing a, a cleanup and beautification of a state memorial to uh, service members from Connecticut who were killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, and so that's something that was very close to my heart um, and we're able to activate our, you know, our members, our volunteers to um, to go and do that project uh, twice a year. Do you partner with any other groups when you, when you do projects um, or do you try to do everything yourselves or I know you mentioned networking and, and, and such. But. Yeah, no, I love collaboration. So I would much rather do something with other friends and new new friends than do it on my own. So um, we partner often with uh, other veteran service organizations, um, other nonprofits that are doing similar work. We also partner with a lot of different um, youth serving programs and 
uh, youth leadership program. So we, um, yeah, absolutely. We would much rather work together than alone, for sure. When you, when you come across these opportunities in certain communities, um, how do you market to the members of that community to help or to join in for that event? Yeah, um, so we have a thriving email list, I would say. So um, I definitely don't spam people, but I am, I do email a lot. Um, so I do tell, you know, we kind of share out, um, uh, you know, upcoming events and things like that via an email list. We have um, a big social media presence. So we're we're usually um, just kind of pushing out events as, as they come up. Um, and right now we're doing a lot virtually as well. Now, do you prioritize the projects that come up? Do you have particular focuses at all? Or um, is it whatever project that would help you, you know, make that mission happen? Yeah, so, um, you know, with our service projects especially, um, they do happen throughout the year, but we have two, um, I would say, focused campaigns, if you will, um, one in the spring and one in the fall. So the one in the spring is um, usually towards the end of April going into May, and that is um, around the anniversary of when uh, when we lost Travis. Um, so we try to do projects to, again, you know, honor his memory, um, and then going into May for Memorial Day, and then we also do another um, kind of service push in November around Veterans Day. Um, and, you know, with our, we, we do a 5K race every year um, in September. Um, it's our 9-11 Heroes Run, and so that's meant to honor those that we lost on 9-11. So, um, you know, we are doing things, you know, throughout the year, but we definitely, I wouldn't say prioritize necessarily, but we do um, really focus and really try to get momentum around those kind of three seasons for those particular events. So w what would be your favorite or popular event or program between, you know, the fundraisers or the, your get-togethers? Yes. Um, so my personal favorite is our Character Does Matter program because um, we get to bring our veterans together with our kids. Um, but I would say my favorite service project that we get to do is tough because we also do a great project here in the city. Um, but I do love the project we do in Connecticut. And um, the Heroes Runs, they're a lot of work. They're a lot of work. Um, but it's really fun to see people come together. So I basically did not pick a favorite child, obviously. I just said that. <laughs> Which is important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you mentioned earlier uh, how it's uh, this group is you know near and dear to your heart, but you're a civilian. Is there? Mm -hmm. do you, did you have family members who are in the military, or, or what speaks to you about it? Yeah, so I um, I did have family members that served. Um, my grandfathers both served. I have uncles on both sides of my family that had been in the military. Um, but when I was growing up, it wasn't really something that um, you know our families talked about. I didn't really grow up with them serving. It was something that they had done, you know, in their youth. Um, and uh, for me, what was really the kind of turning point um, was actually when I was in high school. Um, again, you know, I grew up in Connecticut. I went to high school in Connecticut. Um, and I had been in a history class and my teacher had a former student who had been serving in the military. Um, currently, he was serving um, post September 11th. And he um, came and just spoke to my class, and I had never met a veteran um, who was in that age group. I didn't really, um, it was like the first time I had really made that connection that this was something that was happening, and he wasn't that much older than than me at the time. Um, and so that really was like my, I say, my light bulb moment. So I started reading as much as I could and, and just kind of trying to better understand this community. And um, I literally say it is that moment that led me to being really with you guys here today. Um, and so that's really why I love our Character Does Matter program because, um, you know, if that moment happened to me and it made such a big impact in my life, I'd like to hope that, um, you know, getting to engage with our mentors will um, maybe provide a spark to some of our next generation, not necessarily work in nonprofits, although they're great and you should, but um, <laughs> to do some kind of something to kind of uh, keep connected to the community. Thank you. Uh, one of our uh, audience members uh, said she missed uh, the connection between the veterans and the youth, and you just mentioned mentorship. Um, could you explain a little bit more about that connection? Why is like the, the military being able to work for the Travis Manion Foundation and go talk about character and leadership? Why is that? Why do you feel, uh, as maybe yourself or an organization, that character and leadership needs to be 
uh, addressed amongst, uh, you know, veterans and youth? Yeah, I mean, I think um, from the organization's perspective, and I share it, but I will, you know, kind of offer both lenses. Um, I think from the organization's perspective, there's just a, a wide um, swath of experience and knowledge and perspective that our military community can offer to our young adults. Um, we're not a military recruiting organization. So we're not saying, you know, you have to, you should join the military or anything like that. It's more about um, kind of lending that perspective and that um, mindset of leadership and service and character to our young adults. Um, so that's really why we do it. And I think, you know, from a history perspective, um, shortly after Travis uh, died, his family was um, asked to come and speak about his story to schools that he had gone to and schools that were in his area. So that's literally why the program kind of started. It's just because as more schools heard about his story and heard about, um, you know, his his legacy of character and leadership, it just kind of spawned the program overall. But really as a um, as a goal, right? The the whole point is to um, you know pass along this idea of if not me then who, um, encourage our kids to think about how they can take that mindset into their everyday life, um, and really you know bridge that um, bridge that kind of experience between our military community uh, supporting our kids. Um, and I you know again I share that I do think that um, it's really important I believe too for uh, veterans to be able to engage with our young adults, particularly if, if our kids don't know someone in the military, just like I didn't. I didn't know people who were actively serving and it really opened my perspective and my eyes. Um, and I think for our kids to be able to, to have that experience is important. I believe, uh, I believe all that's very important. And, and we yeah. kept joking around saying like the real world or something like that. How has COVID kind of affected the message being spread? I, did you guys go digitally or is there like a hold on some activities or things? Yeah, um, our volunteers kind of took this call to action and ran with it. So um, they are doing um, a lot of programming virtually. I think, what was it, like two months ago, we had someone talk to yep. to your folks virtually. Um, so we've been doing calls just like this. We've done stuff on Facebook Live. Um, we've completely pivoted virtually, which is um, really a testament to technology or people. I'm not really sure. But um, uh, yeah, so we've done everything virtually, which has been awesome. Um, we've actually also had a number of our um, my colleagues and our volunteers across the country um, also kind of respond to this moment um, in person as well. So. Um, I have some colleagues in Chicago who started a uh, food pantry to support uh, veterans in Chicago. So they have um, donated, I think, over 300 meals to families wow. or served 300 families in Chicago. Um, so they're doing uh, that on a regular basis. Um, we have some folks who have been doing um, other similar projects and just kind of reaching out to their community as well. So people have responded both in real life um, to the critical need as well as uh, virtually to kind of continue our programming as well. Have you always wanted to do a job like this or how did you get here? Maybe what was your education path before you ended up with the Travis Mania Foundation? Yes, yeah, so um, I uh, went to college, I got an English degree, I wanted to be a book editor and somehow landed here. Um, I uh, I kind of pivoted to nonprofits um, pretty quickly out of my graduation from college. I worked at um, another organization that does uh, after school programming here in New York City. Um, that was my first job out of college. And then uh, before this, I worked at another veteran service organization. So I've always worked in nonprofits. And I think um, it's probably going to sound really corny, but I just feel like it's um, to me, it's really important to do work that um, really like fuels you and that you believe in the work that you're doing in the mission and the community that you're serving. And um, I mean, I love books and perhaps in another life I could have been a book editor, but um, I think this was definitely where I should have been. So th this for you is a very rewarding job. Yes. Yeah. 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 Nonprofits are, um, are interesting. You know, I think um, there's a lot to be said about, you know, how tough sometimes it can be, right? Different communities can um, require different needs, but ultimately 
you know, especially I work on the programs side, right, which means I'm digging into things. I'm, I'm working with, um, you know, the communities that we're serving. I get to do a lot of events. Um, so I get to be part of, of what's actively happening. Um, and there are lots of roles to have in nonprofits, but um, yes, I think it's definitely rewarding to be able to see the impact on the ground. I hear you on that. Uh, I myself as well have <laughs> gone to college for something different and wanted to do something yeah. else and now work for, you know, the Scouts, which is a nonprofit. And I think it's an absolutely rewarding experience. Is there yeah. any particular uh, like moving stories that you could share with us, like a, maybe a greatest hit or, or something that maybe something really great that came out of one of uh, your activities? Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think what's been most interesting to kind of see happen is how our community really supports one another. So as volunteers, you know, I work with folks that are in New York, in Boston, in, you know, Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and, you know, they're physically far apart, but they're able to really support each other in a positive way. Um, I think just seeing how our adults have worked together has been and really built that community has been really impactful. Um, and then we also have uh, a really wonderful program that we've been um, doing in, in Philadelphia for almost more than five years now. It's a, a leadership academy at a high school in Philadelphia. And just to be able to see how um, students who have gone through that program, um, it's a character uh, course, a leadership course that we do in that school, um, who continue to reflect on it as they've graduated high school, as they've gone on to college, um, just to kind of see how sort of indelible that impact is, is, is really impressive. What, offhand, do you know what kind of uh, leadership activities that they learn at that academy or how's, how's it run? Do they have to apply? Do they get chosen? Yeah, so um, that academy is actually part of our Character Does Matter program. Um, it's kind of the 2.0 model. Um, and so they combine discussions about character with um, activities. So they've done, um, you know, physical activities to kind of live out um, strengths like integrity, right? Um, and they've done uh, ethical decision making. They do all kinds of kind of um, both abstract sort of critical thinking activities as well as kind of uh, getting your hands dirty, doing some CrossFit activities. So. Wow, it seems um, uh, like a mini boot camp or kind meets, of, yeah. <laughs> kind of like you know, fun way to learn, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How would somebody go about joining your mission? Like, um, say, say if we you mentioned like word of mouth and things, but is there a sign up or a website of some sort where people can reach out? There is, actually. If you go to um, travismanion.org, uh, there is a button to join the mission, and you can, um, you know, kind of sign up and, and join and be part of our efforts. Um, we have activities for our students to kind of engage um, with community service projects and even our Heroes Run, our 9-11 Heroes Run, um, which is all volunteer-driven, uh, so we always can use more volunteers. Um, and even for, you know, adults, any, any kind of version of your life path can, can join and participate in, in events that we're having throughout the year. Thank you. Um, uh, we had another question from the, from the room. Do you pair one-on-one -on -one with kids and veterans or is it just a, like a larger scale? Like, um, when we had somebody talk to us. Yeah. Um, it really runs the gamut. So our traditional model is, um, what we've done with with your kind of uh, council. So having one person talk to a larger group. However, we have had a lot of interest for one-on-one -on -one, and we do try as best as we can to um, satisfy that, uh, that need because we think that's um, definitely impactful and really important to kind of build that one-on-one -on -one experience and, and relationship. So um, when we're able to, we do absolutely try to do that. We just learned so much, and I just kept on thinking of this question. I didn't know how to ask it, but I think I know now. So many uh, of our scouts work on citizenship-based merit badges. And one of the questions is, like, what do you think a good citizen is? So in your words, and then through the work that you've done, which is fantastic, how would you define citizenship? Oh, wow. Um, I think citizenship and being a good citizen really starts with being informed. Um, and I think that 
is done through many different ways. I think that there's certainly the, you know, reading your local newspaper, you know, engaging in local um, ad advocacy events, being part of your town halls, you know, any number of those things, right? When I was growing up, I was definitely a newspaper reader. I was a reader, um, for sure, which is why I got an English degree. Um, I think that's one part of being informed. I think the other part of being informed, especially I think in this moment that we're in right now, is talking talking to your community, right? Going beyond, um, you know, a, a Facebook post or, um, you know, the internet and actually picking up the phone or engaging in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your neighbors, your friends, parents, you know, whatever it may be, um, and having conversations because I think that um, it's really important to really understand people's individual perspectives and their stories. Um, and I think that that helps to inform really empathetic, um, thoughtful citizens who go on to um, vote and uh, potentially lead projects and organizations and agencies and even maybe run for office. So that's probably what I would say. Well, thank you. That was fantastic. <laughs> Is there any advice would you that you would give uh, to any scouts or um, anybody in the audience who would be looking towards uh, moving towards maybe out of their career path or moving towards a career path that you have? Any, um, you know, good words towards nonprofits or any advice about life at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... I mean, the number one thing I would say is uh, be open to adapting. Um, so I, you know, I wanted to be a book editor and very honestly, um, could not get a job, could not, could not make that work. And so I was kind of like, okay, well, what's the, the next best thing to kind of supporting, um, honestly, literacy. And that's how I got to education nonprofits. Um, so I think being able to be adaptable and, um, not to say don't follow your dreams, dreams are great, but um, you know, being willing to try a different kind of creative spin is, is important. Um, and then I think in terms of nonprofits, I would say, you know, find that thing that you really care about. Um, for me, it was kids and veterans, um, but it could be the environment or social justice or animals, right? It could be anything and whatever it is, uh, you know, figure out how you can volunteer. That's how I started. I was volunteering. Um, and then kind of got into real work jobs um, and just kind of, you know, read or, or follow organizations, follow them on social media, sign up for an email list. Um, just figure out what you really want to focus on and kind of run at it as best as you can. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. We're at the end of our time, but I just want to say thank you. And uh, everybody, this was Rebecca Forbes from the Travis Mayan Foundation. And uh, thank you so much. And I hope that we get to see you again or one of your volunteers. Um, you run such a great program. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon.